I am unmuted. Yes. So now it's nine o'clock. Welcome to this webinar about the component wizard. Um, just practically, can you hear me? If you can hear me, could you raise your hands in here? Because I have experienced some um, sound problems earlier on. Could you raise your hand uh, if you hear me? Yes, so somebody hears me. <laughs> That's okay. Then I'll, 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 I'll add some more. That's super, super. Thank you. Then I'll um, close my window here and then we can uh, start uh, for this webinar here. My name is uh, Kirsten Holst and I'll run this webinar about the component wizard. Uh, I'm uh, doing a lot of training. That's m uh, my main responsibility here at PC Schematics. So um, it's quite fitting that I'll, I'll do this webinar training as well. With me is my colleague daughter. Uh, so um, if you have any questions during the webinar, you can uh, type them in at the questions pane, uh, which is to the right, I guess, at your, uh, in your screen too. And uh, some of the questions daughter will answer right away. Other questions she will pass on to me and then I will take them during the webinar. It's online. I'll uh, record the, uh, the, the, the webinar. I'm doing that right now. And uh, that means, I don't want to, 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 to scare you and have you to leave, but that means that when the webinar is over, I will uh, send you a link uh, to the webinar um, so that you can uh, re-see it or you can uh, forward the link to, to any of your colleagues or whatever you want to do with it. But um, the plan for the webinar is that uh, I'll show you what the, web, uh, what the component wizard can do. First of all, I'll tell you why we want to use the component wizard. And uh, I'll also try to s tell you uh, what you can uh, type into uh, the database, uh, because it's all about the database, really. And then I will uh, take you through the different um, options of the component wizard to s uh, simply show you and tell you and, and, and try to, to, to make some components, too, of different kinds uh, that can be, uh, be made by using the component wizard. So uh, that's more or less a Plan. Remember that if something is unclear, uh, type in the question, and then uh, then we will get back to to, to you uh, for for that. Okay. First of all, I take it that when you are on a, a um, the webinar like this one, you have uh, used um, the the program earlier on. But just to refresh it very very quickly, when we want to use the um, the component uh, wizard, uh, when, when we want to use components instead of symbols, there's a short question already. Ah, yeah. Ah, I, I, yeah, that was, the, somebody was, was awake. Um, we are just about to release the version 20 here in Denmark. So uh, what I will do here is that I will make a very short introduction to a couple of things in version 20. <laughs> so I may, I, I know it might, might be a little bit early, but I'll take any, any chance I can to, uh, to make a test of this version. So um, that's the reason why it looks a little bit different from what you usually see. But get used to it, because this is what it will look like very shortly for, for, for everybody. Uh, we make the release in, in Denmark in a, a couple of months before we do it internationally. Uh, because if there's something in it that's not working so properly, then it's uh, better that we find out instead of you finding it out. So, um, so, but it's true. It looks a little bit different from what it normally does. Um, that also mean that um, then you know this function here. But uh, just to remind you that when we want to use the component uh, database, it's simply that if I have a component like this one, and uh, you can see that this is a contact, it consists of not just one symbol. Uh, and the database will tell me exactly what it consists of. You can see that it consists of a coil, a three-pole contact, and this window here will take care of simply keeping track of how many components are still, or how many symbols are still used uh, to be used in, in, in this component. And uh, that function is, um, is very, very essential in the, in the program. So this function about being, uh, uh, it's, so it's visible for everybody to see what functions does a component consist of. Um, 
that that is why we want to to use the database and also and i think i'll just take one more of those because as you can see now i can go in here and call it q2 so i've got two different components and when i run those lists here if I go in and right click and update the list here, you can see that I can have this list to count and it will tell me exactly what kind of components I have uh, in the project. And if I use my uh, components list here and update that list, you can again see that I have a lot of different descriptions about this contact, uh, about this component, uh, uh, because I took it from the database. Whereas if you go in and select a symbol I could go up and take that one here and I know that I, I guess that you do know this but you can see if I took this one here I need to call it a name myself now it's called K because contacts are called K in the standard there's no type there's no article number and when I place it here you can see there are no connection names either because this one is not a component and also if I go or when I go to the list here and update, you'll see I'll have a line here simply saying one of nothing because I don't know what component it is. And if I update that list here, you can see it's a K, but I know absolutely nothing about it. So why I want to use a components database is that I want to have all this information as I have here about all components in the project. And it's so much, much easier to, to, to have them edit automatically simply because they're in the database. So as soon as I add them to the project, then, then everything is in the project and I can update my lists and I, I know everything. Whereas this one, I'll need to go back to it and then I'll need to go in and 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 open up for all the connection names and I'll need to go in and, and give it a type and an article number before I can go in here and have it in my list and still I don't know anything about the component so uh, that's why I want to use the component database and I guess that you do know that already because some of you have used the, pro uh, the program earlier on so um, that's not so new. Then about a component like, like this one, it's in the database and I know a lot about this component because I've, I've put it into the database. If you look here, this new window, now you might as well get a small introduction to it. In this window here, which is new, this part here, you can see a, a, a file name of all the symbols that the component consists of and the connection names of those. And you can see when I roll or scroll here with my mouse, it'll do the same thing in the window below because the window below shows a symbol, so nothing is new in that one. But I also have a, a new window here which will list all the accessories, the electrical accessories that I can attach to this component. So instead of going into the database, which I have been able to do for a couple of versions, then they are listed here. Ah, get away with you. They're listed here. So if I take this one and go in and put it in my, com uh, in my, my project, you can see that I have one more component here now because Q1 consists of two different components. Q1 like this one, which has got the those contacts and the coil left still and q1 accessory which consists of those symbols here and now i have used one of the symbols and i can go in here and i could take the other one so this window here is new and where do i get all this information from I get it from the database and uh, I, kn I know that you probably do know that so <laughs> nothing new here and I could find it but I think it's easy just to uh, open this one and then you can see I have it here and if I want to see what's in the database then you can see I have this big window because this is a database and this is one record in the database so, and all records in the database consist of the same kind of information not the same information but the same kind of information first I have my EAN number that's a barcode and uh, we used that number uh, to differ between different components and uh, it's possible to scan a component if you scan the, the barcode so that means that this number here must be unique uh, there should only be one uh, 
component in the database with this number because otherwise I don't know which component I'm actually taking. Then it's possible to add a stock number, an order number, but they don't need to be unique, but um, they could, uh, that would be okay. Then I have a type, the EAN number, I will put that in the, the article number on the symbol and the type will be in the type uh, on the symbol. So uh, they will be, um, yeah, be the ones that uh, we, we, we normally add to, um, to, to the data, uh, to the component in the, in, the, in the files. Then I have descriptions in different languages. One is uh, DK, Denmark, uh, one is UK. I have a DE as in German. Um, and uh, if you need to have descriptions in your language, because I could see in the list here that everybody's not Danish or English speaking, but then you could simply go in and, and you could uh, change the database and add a new uh, data field in here with your own language in it. Um, and then it would work exactly like that. I don't think I will get to showing you how you, you do that, but um, maybe we're lucky, but, but it's pretty easy to do it. Then it's possible to uh, add links to a catalog or to a data sheet. I could type in something about source and manufacturers and how many units are per pack. Then there's some prices. It's possible to have prices. We don't uh, distribute any prices from here, but uh, right now the, the data fields are here. Then I have what's difficult <laughs> because this is a PCS type. That's where I type all uh, the, the the file names of my uh, symbols, and uh, don't don't bother to understand it because very very soon you will see how to do it easily. Uh, pin data are here, mechanical uh, file is is here, and then I have uh, some things here like different symbol types, single line symbol. I have my add-ons, my my optional accessories. They are listed here with EAN numbers for each accessory a file a link to a picture and you can see it's this picture here actually uh, and then I have for this component too a lot of different wobbly wobbly here that's actually a 3D uh, file uh, description that I have down here but um, let's go to that and then I will show you exactly how to make this because when we use in old days, we would type in here directly. I'll just need to say that, but now we don't do that. We'll use a component wizard instead, and that's exactly what I'm going to guide you through right now. The component wizard is here, uh, and uh, when I open it, I can uh, I can have a small window. I prefer ah, sometimes I, I prefer to have a, a larger window because then I can see more stuff in here. But I can go in here and the component wizard can help me create new components. They can uh, copy a new a component and, and then I just need to make a small change to an existing record and then I have a new component. I can edit one of the existing records and I can edit many uh, different records at once. It could, for instance, be like the manufacturer has got a new name or you do typed it uh, wrongly or something like that. And then I can uh, delete some and uh, continue and then I have something about load external. That's not relevant here, but I can create a new component. And if I create a new component, I would give it an article number and the article number is typed into EAN number in the database. Because remember, article number, I think I'll just do it like this here, article number is here, that's the EAN number and type is here, that's a type. So the link between the symbols in PC schematic automation and to the article numbers in the database because it's actually two different programs um, but uh, but you can see here so I'll continue with this component that's got a, an EAN number I'll just call it thousand and then it's got a type called ASDF and then we have something called table codes I don't know whether you noticed it when we were in the database but I have a lot of different uh, uh, table codes here because I want to structure my database. I don't want to put everything just in one big bunch. I want to be able to sort through my database in a more structured way. And um, some things are like motors, pumps, uh, regulators. Some things are lamps. That's the ones I'll use. So if I want to create a new lamp, I'll simply select this group 
and then uh, it will write 5000 in here and 5000 that's a group of, of lamps filament lamps and um, uh, don't worry I'll just use this to uh, and then I know so I'll, I'll make a new one we'll call it 5000 and uh, then I'll make a new component uh, when I want to create a new component, I should go up and consider um, the name of it. And a, a lamp, a signal lamp, is one that shows signals or information. And P for, I think, for present, actually, that's where it originates from. But that will be the, the, the code that will appear in the symbol when I place it in the, in the, in the project. And then I can look up different symbols. I guess that some of you have tried to create your own components and uh, it's a little bit different, difficult because you need to find out the proper uh, symbols for those components. But right now it will look it up in the database and it works its way that it will look through the group of 5000 and see which symbol do I normally use for components in this component group. And uh, an example is this uh, white lamp uh, that I also have some different boxes. So they are here, but this lamp here, if I double click on that one, then it will come in with a lamp. That's a file name of it. It's called 08-10B01. That's a file name. And remember this uh, data field called PCS type. So that's where this is written. And then the pins are called X1 and X2 because that's the normal pin designation of, of this uh, component type. And X1, X2, they will be written in the database in pin data. Uh, but right now it's here and if it's okay, then I'll just uh, carry on. If my special component is not called X1, X2 uh, 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 on the pins, I could type in Y1 and uh, Y2, and then it will be typed into the database instead. So when I'm satisfied with this, I'll click next, and then I can add a mechanical symbol. And when I, when I make this mechanical symbol, I've got different uh, choices. I could either go out and again look up in the database and then it will go through my, my existing components and see what does um, lamps uh, look like and then it will find a mechanical symbol for me. But I don't know, I, I guess that you, it's not everybody, not everybody makes mechanical uh, drawings or, or arrangement drawings of the, of the panels, but when you do that, then it's important that the components have exactly the right size, because otherwise you cannot use this layout drawing for anything. You need to know how big is my panel and how much space does the individual components f uh, take up in the panel. And I could go in and have just a, a, a mechanical size-wise uh, symbol here. And this one is 20 by 20, and this is 20 by 40 millimeters. If I do that, then it's okay. But if I have a symbol like this, I cannot see how big it is. That's one option. If I if it's okay, then I could select it, and then it will be it will be like this. But I'll delete that one. I could also go in and and generate say so mechanical, and it should be P by the way because it's a lamp. And then I could go in and say that uh, this is the size of it, and this is what it looks like. Diameter no a radius of 20, so that's a diameter of 40. I think it's a diameter of 30. Um, and then I could go in and say this is my mechanical symbol. That would be okay to do it that way. And if you want to just have a flat um, drawing, then you could do it this way. Um, I think it might be rectangular, so um, that that's it. So if I want to do it like, like this, this could be okay, and that would be okay. But I do have one more option, because now, and that's also new from version 20, and that's why I wanted to run this in version 20, because you can actually do it in 19, but um, I wanted to show you what this can do, because we can make a, a 3D um, a version of this component here. And um, if you have data in a, a certain format, then you can import it. But if you can, don't have this data, and you might not have that on all components, then you could go in and say that if my new component is uh, 20 by 40 and 20 high, then I can make a small box like this. And uh, I can place a reference point in the middle, in the bottom of it, and that will be in the middle of the Dean um, 
uh, what we call mounting rail because uh, in that way I, I know that the, it'll be the middle of the component when I mount it on the Dean rail. Might not be so important with the Dean rail for lamps, but uh, never mind. And then I'll go in and add my my connection names. And you remember I call them Y1 and Y2. And then I can go in and select different types of uh, terminals. I can go in and select different uh, directions for, for mounting onto those terminals. And then I would go in and find my uh, position here. And this one, I think it will be in 10 in the X direction, I will have it in 35, and I'll put it in 15 in the in the set direction. Then I, I can type in some different sizes here of wiring, and this one could be 0 0.7 and 1.5, and uh, max, 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 that's max number of threads, so, so I could have two wires on this one, and then I want it to be stripped 10 millimeters. So um, I can type that in here and then I want to add one more it's called Y2 and uh, it's not uh, in 10x it's in 30x so then it will no that's no garbage it'll be in 10 it'll be in forget about it <laughs> I think it will be in 15 because uh, I, I should have put it in but never mind then they will be here you can see that now they are located right up here and if I say OK, uh, then this is what this component looks like. And I can go in and select other types of symbols for this uh, component. I don't want to. I can add different types of accessories. Um, I think, uh, no, accessories comes in three different versions. One version is fixed accessory, and you can read about them here too. I have fixed accessories, um, the lamps that we have in the database, the demo database for now, um, with fixed accessories such so that uh, they come with a socket on the parts list and uh, for the mechanical layout as well. They have a fixed socket, uh, the, the, the different lamps, so every time you take a socket, comes uh, with this uh, no every time you take a lamp it comes with the socket as well you could also have um, what we call optional mechanical accessory and uh, one example of optional mechanical accessories for terminal rows you have the divider plates you have the end plates for terminal rows you select them not per terminal but per terminal row that means that this should be selectable for 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 the component uh, article number but but not for 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 all of them only for yeah for the end and when you when you go to another article number so that would be an example of mechanical accessory. And then we also have electrical accessories. And uh, we, you saw the contact in the beginning. One kind of accessory is like uh, an auxiliary contact. Uh, components that have their own electrical symbol in the diagram, that's electrical accessory. Because yeah, you combine them and you, you, you can add wires to them as well. So that would be electrical accessory. And it simply works a way that if I want to, you could say this lamp, if I want to select this uh, socket, sometimes I don't want it to come every time, then I could go into this uh, group where I know, because, know where I put it and, and say that uh, this socket, I want it to be selectable as a mechanical accessory. I don't want it to be fixed so that it comes every time I use a component, but I want to be able to select it. And then I will put it in here. And then I'll click Next. If I want to add a picture to the component, I can click here and it will browse in my different folders. One folder is, um, is uh, dedicated um, or selected to be have a, an alias called Pick. That's uh, yeah, but it will simply look up in my, my my directories and say all my components. Where are they? And yeah, I know that this is not very lamp-like, but uh, I'll just um, link to one of those. And I could do the same thing with a data sheet or to a catalog and, and go in and then I would look up in, a, in, a, in another folder here. So um, never mind about that one. And then finally, I can go in here and say that the manufacturer of this component, I can select them from the list of existing uh, manufacturers in my, 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 my database. Or I could go in and say, this is me. I'm the manufacturer and the source where I buy it, that's you. So you could type or you could select from the list. 
Then I could go in and select descriptions. That's to script that one. I, I want to, to deselect that at some time. But this is a description of a um, new lamp with a selectable, uh, uh, selectable socket. Yeah, whatever. And um, it's approved because it's one that I want to use, a preferred or approved component. And then Oh, I think it's easier to see here. You can see that now everything I typed in here, you see, remember, it looks a little bit like what we did earlier on. A uh, picture is here, and then I have a, a lot of things here. That's uh, the, the 3D uh, um, the 3D symbol. And then I can go in here, next, next, next. And if I want to use it, go into the database and use it. It's this one here. You can see that this is the symbol for it. The uh, connection names are here, and um, if I go to this layout page here, you can see that my lamp looks like this. It's not very nice, but <laughs> it's it's here. And uh, if I will go in, I can actually see that it's a uh, kind of 3D. Uh, ah, uh, I can I'm find it pretty hard to zoom in here, but. Uh, um, you can see it's here, so it's got a height, and that also goes for, um, for 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 the other components that I have here, that I have the um, the, the 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 3D uh, dimensions of this component. Ah, uh, where did I go? I think I need to go like this, and then I you can see that I have the the components here made in the same way. So that's basically what you can do with this component wizard. Basically, but I have a lot of other tricks that I want to, to, to show you here. Back to this wizard here. Um, if I want to create a new one, and we'll call it 5001, then you saw early on that if I have selected a table code, that means that I can use the, 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 the wizard to make a sort of copy, a type copy of, of components, but this time, I'll just have a, a, a new component type and I'll just uh, see what I can do also. Because if I don't have a, um, a component group here, then this one is deselected and I cannot select it uh, either. I could go in and again I could select something from up here, but I want to add symbols. And I guess that some of you have been into this symbol menu many times when you have made your drawings, because this is where all the symbols are. And um, the idea is that if I go in and want to create a new component, I can go in and look through this large group of component uh, of symbols. And uh, I guess that you find it just as difficult as I do. So if I'm going to make a new component, I would do a lot of things if to avoid getting in here because there's so many different symbols here. I think 1,781. That's a lot of symbols, but. Let's just say that I want to go in and make a new contactor, for instance. Operating devices, that's uh, my, my coil. Um, and now it's um, freezing, I think, some something in here. Ah, come on. Um, let's just try that. This is what happens when you sometimes use something that's not completely finished. But um, yeah. yeah, now it's, yeah, I, I hope that, uh, that it might work quicker this time. It doesn't really, ah, yeah, okay. So, operating devices, I want to have a coil. If I take this coil here, double click, then you can see it comes in with A1, A2, because coils are, are born or made that, that way. If I want to add a contact, I have different contacts here, and uh, I might, for instance, want to use, not that one, not that one, but I could go down and find a three pole contact if I'm lucky could be that one, this one here. And you can see it's made with one, two, three, four, five, six. So that will be okay now. Then if it's a, a normal contact, a normal contact of a kind in which I have, for instance, I can go up here and say two normally uh, open contacts. You can see it's made with a, a one and two. I want to have one more so I can copy and uh, I only make one copy, still call one and two, that's wrong. I'll go in here, call it 13, call it 14, bless you. <laughs> go in and call it 23, 
and 24. So it's simple to, to do it this way. And you can see in this way, it'll be easy to make a new component. That's one thing I can do. I want to show you more uh, other uh, things that I can do. So right now I'm not really making a component. I'll, I'll simply just show you what I can do. So now I'm not copy, I'll just delete because uh, and then I'll, I'll show you some different options that I have. That one, you can see that it has a small triangle here. That's because I have something called state in some of my symbols. This is Danish, so that doesn't really make a lot of sense for you. So I'll find another symbol uh, that I can use for this. And I have one in this MISC folder here, PCS Multi. You've got the same one in your installations, no matter which installation you have. This one here is called Multi. It's got different states, states that are called DCAC there VAR so um that's easy that's quite international so I guess that's why I selected that but you can see if I select here DC then you can see I have a small DC thing here if I want to um add a new one I can have a copy I'll just have one more copy and this one could be um DAC and then the component will look like that. Um, some of the symbols that we have uh, have been created this way. Um, if you want to, if you can see the idea, or grab the, 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 the idea of it, then uh, one of the videos that we have on YouTube can show you, or will show you exactly how you can make your own symbols this way. So uh, just hang on, but I'll, I'll here I'll show you how you can use it. Imagine that you have a component, and um, normally when, 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 when we, we, we talk about um, uh, symbols in states, the component type that I have in mind is a sensor. A sensor that can uh, sense anything, <laughs> but a sensor is normally connected to uh, a, an input symbol on the, um, uh, on the PLC. And uh, if I, uh, the idea is that if I make a multi-sensor, then I could simply select different states for different sensor types. So that's, you can have that in mind. So that would be one of the things that, that we have. Um, but that's one thing that I have. So I, I think I'll just delete that one too. If, let's just say that if I have this one here, and let's just say it's a, DC sensor, that's a, a weird component, but normally our sensors, they are connected to an input. Uh, I think maybe it's easier to show it to you here because uh, I'll just go to uh, that page here. If I go in and take some of the symbols, uh, the, uh, you can see here that um, uh, if I do here, you can see I have my input here and now I just have a, 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 a push button here. But if I had a sensor up here, it would be up here and then my input uh, symbol would be down here. That's the way that we normally make our drawings. That means, and then back to, to, to this one, that I'll just continue here, next, 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 that if I make this a sensor, then the connection points that I have here on top, I would need to disable them because it, that wouldn't make sense in that drawing here. So I can go in here and say disable, disable, disable. And if this connection is called, I'll just call it A and, and B and C. I don't think you have any components that are like that. But then uh, it would uh, look like this and uh, I could go in and then this is one way of having the component. You can see it's the same symbol, but it looks very, very different from what it was just before. Then, I don't know how you do your drawings, but I know that some people prefer the input symbols to be up here. Um, but that means that this one, if I used it in my diagram, I would need to rotate it. Otherwise, it would, wouldn't fit properly in the diagram. But what I can do here is that I could go in and add what we call an alternative. And uh, if I do that, I can go in here and then you can see I get this special figure up here. And um, then this is alternative one. That's the one we just made. And I can make an alternative two. And now I'll disable 
the top, the bottom connections, and then at the top, I will call them A and B and C, because that will be the other way around, and then I could go in and say this is also DC. So this is one thing I can in this database or component wizard. And how it works is I'll just do like this. If I go in and go to the database and select this fiber one, you can see here that I have two different alternatives here. And um, uh, I can see that they're called ABC, ABC, and I have alternative one, alternative two. And if I select one of those here, I can go in and call it B, whatever, and then it will look like this. That will be one way of, of, of using it. If I go in and take one more, uh, then I'll take alternative two this time, and I'll call it B2, and then it looks like this. The same component, but two different ways of viewing it. I could have go in, gone in and, and do like this, and then I could rotate it, and I could, uh, ah, that was the other way, way around, I could mirror it, and then I'll be the same place. But that's difficult. It's easier to go in and make those alternatives. So that's um, that's uh, one thing that you can do in uh, by, by using this component wizard. Go in and, and use those alternatives or make those alternatives. So uh, that's one thing that could go in here. Nobody really answered, uh, asked any questions yet, so um, I'll just continue. This is about the, the um, uh, the, the alternative um, that's used many places. Uh, this is one way of, um, of making them when I, I just have a, a new component, a new normal component. But um, we can also do other things uh, in the database. And uh, maybe I'll just show you first why. Because if I go in and then I have a new component a new um, new project here, and this is a new, um, not really new feature, but something that we've been working on for a couple of years, and there are uh, demo projects uh, in version 19 as well. It looks a little bit different, but uh, it, it's in there as well. But rem the idea is that um, if I go in and, um, and have my diagrams, and in the diagrams I can... Um, I, I want to use my diagrams. I look like this, and uh, they're made with dots, and uh, some uh, 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 connections are made with, with, with bends. But uh, a lot of times people say, ah, it would be so good that when you have this layout drawing, couldn't you also have the length of the wiring? Because if I drag in one of those, you can see all the blue uh, lines here. They're actually the connections between the components as they are in the, the diagrams. But I only need one small thing here to get a wire length out of it, and that's to, to, to put it in the wire trace. And this panel router thing can do that. But... Um, and that's one thing, but, but but as soon as I start doing that, then a lot of other questions will be, yeah, is a space enough in the wire trays? And, uh, and that needs to be taken care of too. And that's why I have up here in the component wizard some other uh, options that I, I can use when I make components, because other components than normal are that. I can make, and let's take this one first, I could go in and make a wire tray in my database. And a wire tray would look like this if you, you, you looked at it from the end. And I could go in and say that the height of it is 20 millimeters, the width of it could be 20 millimeters. And in that way, I would know exactly how much space would I have in the wire tray for my wires and my cables, for instance. And then I could go in and say it's two meter long because I also want to have a parts list. And in the parts list, I, of course, want to know how many lengths of those wire trays should I buy. So if I want to make a wire tray, I could type in like this and then just next, next, next. I don't want to put anything more, maybe a description. But uh, in this way, I have a wire tray. And wire trays could be, it's not here, but Maybe it's here. Yeah, if I, I put wire tray in the, the pick menu here, I could take this uh, line type 
and uh, go in and that one is 20 by 5 by 25 and it will look like this and you can see uh, this one has got article number and type up here if I take another one which is 50 by 25 it will look like this because it's got a different width. So if I, I, I create wire trays in the database, I can add them to a line up in my pick menu and then I can uh, use them in the drawing directly and they'll have the right size. And I would also be able to, to extract from this drawing here whether I have enough space or whether they are filled up or, or room enough because I know that in, uh, in regard to some um, approvals you need to have extra space like 30% extra space in your wire uh, trace and that. So uh, that would be possible to measure that because if I go back to this one, and go in and say 53, 4 I think, um, a new type of component, it's not just a wire tray, it could also be the wire, wire, this is the wire, the diameter of the wire could be like uh, one millimeter, ah that's a thin one, two millimeters in diameter and then that will be, be the diameter to, to find out how full the wire tray is. And then for, for the parts list, it could be 100 meters per, per, per reel in, in this one. And that will be one uh, component type also in the database. Could also go in, I'll, I'll, I won't make them now, but it's just to show you what we can do. Could also go in and make a jumper link because this panel router could also go in and check whether the jumper link connections are correct. Because if I have a link in a, a, of a jumper, this up here, how many links is simply about having the parts list right. Um, so that's one thing. But distance between the connectors are five millimeters that will be for one type of terminal if they are 7.5 millimeters it will be for another type of terminal if they are 10 millimeters they'll be for a, a third kind of terminal so the distance between um between the, the 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 links here are important because a pen router can also check whether the link connection that you made the jumper link connection that you made in the in the um, here is uh, has the right size, so uh, it's simply to know that you can do that as one. Well. Okay, maybe that's too much to to make, but but it's a possibility. Then the cable can create a cable in the database as well, and that window looks a little bit different. If I go in and uh, add a symbol here, which could be a cable, I think we have a cable. I'll just take this one here. Ah, this one is a cable. If I want to create a cable, again, the diameter of the cable, that could be like five millimeters and so and so many meters per reel and drum. If I want to create a five conductor cable, I'll write five. It's colors I can select from the list here and say they will be the colors of this uh, of, of this cable. I could say numbers, or I could say text uh, text, and then I could write anything uh, to on on the uh, on those here. But numbers and maybe the last conductor is green yellow. Very very easy way to create a cable. And if the cable has got accessories, again you will get through exactly the same windows as earlier so um, yeah that's what can be done quite easily in the database then the last part of this webinar will be about a special component type that can also be created with a component wizard here um, yeah if you create a terminal you should create as a terminal but the, all the windows will be the same but that one I'll not go through, but the PLCs, PLCs uh, are a little bit, uh, have been very difficult to make uh, manually in the database, but if you use a component wizard, we'll get through it and um, quite easily actually. But the window where you start uh, to make a PLC looks like this. And if you want to create a new PLC in the database, you start by saying how many channels or how many addresses does this PLC have. And if what I'm going to create first is a, 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 a simple card with eight inputs, then I'll write eight up here. 
and I'll also write eight down here because eight equals eight. So that's easy algebra. So, but eight equals eight and they import and then I can go in and select whether they are digital or analog because that will be what we call a, a status type on the, con on the addresses. Um, if I don't want to, to add that, I can go down and say none. Uh, so that's the selection that, that you have. But uh, right here, I think they're just digital inputs. Um, what the program actually does is that it looks in this directory here to find the PLC symbols. And um, the reason why we would do that is it doesn't need to go through all the symbols. So we'll have one, one folder, one uh, symbol folder in which uh, it looks up uh, the PLC symbols. Um, that was the first selection. When I go to the next page here, I first start to select um, how many addresses I have per channel. Normally I have one address per channel, so that would be, 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 be default. But how many terminals do I have per channel? If this is a very simple PLC, I might only have one connection per, per, per address. Um, so when there's a signal on it, it goes, no, this is an input, so it doesn't go high, but something will be on on that, that uh, terminal here, and, and then that, that will be it. If that's what I'm going to have, I can select between three different input symbols. This one, on which I can add a, a plug and socket connection, uh, or two different ones. Uh, one is with a small wire here, but you cannot see it when it gets out. But um, there, there will be the two different, three different uh, uh, symbols I can use. If I have two terminals per address, I can select between eight different symbols here, and this one is one of them as well. Um, so which one you want to use depends on the component that you have. How many connections do you have per address? That's your first question here. Uh, if I have one, that's it. Then this pin, uh, which I connect to, has got a terminal name. Uh, and uh, if my uh, terminal is called x0, and it cons this is address 0, I, I input 0, then I could start typing. I don't want to do that. I can put the mouse up here on fill grid, and it looks as if this looks OK. Click, and then all the connection and pre-addresses are filled out. Then I can go in here and select my reference symbol. For you, those of you who have worked with the PLCs, you know that we use a reference symbol and we use the IO symbol. So reference symbol is just like an overview symbol that you place somewhere central in your documentation, whereas the input symbols are the one that you connect your inputs to. And they can be, be distributed throughout the, 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 the document. So, uh, but that's how we do it because, uh, yeah, because that's how we do it. But then I can go in and select the reference symbols. And um, when I have selected one terminal uh, per address, then it will look through the, 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 the folder of uh, uh, the symbols, the PLC symbols, and say that those are the, uh, the, the, the reference symbols that you can use. And uh, I like that one. If I took this one, you can see I'll have four symbols because all my my, my uh, addresses will be up here. Uh, all my, my, my addresses will be up here. I'll just delete them. Uh, if I take this one, I'll only have this one uh, input symbol here. And you can see that all the dimmed ones, they are where the address and the connection name is transferred from the, the former tab. I can do nothing about that. But then at the bottom of this uh, reference symbol, I have got four connectors. And they could, for instance, be for a 24 volts. Uh, this uh, could be 24 volts too. And that one could be uh, zero volt and zero volts. So, and that way I could add my, my, uh, my, my um, supply voltage to this one as well. And if that's what I do, I'll just click next, next, next here. And then I'll need to I'll open this a new a new file here because uh, then I can I can play on this one. Um, if I go to the database here, I had this uh, type called 5005. That was the last one, and you can see it looks like this. This is the reference symbol K1, and uh, those are all the input symbols that I have up here. 
and they fit together. So if I take this one and I can go in and, and write something here, you see, it will come directly in the reference symbol as well. That was a very, very easy way of creating this component. I don't know whether any one of you have tried to, to create your own components, but this in the database, it looks like this, and this pin file here looks like this. This is where I would stop and say, no, never ever, I wouldn't make those PLCs in the database, because this is not for human beings, this is simply only for for, for machines. So um, instead of typing this uh, manually, I would use the component wizard because that would be the only way of doing it uh, properly. Um, There's so many ways of, of not succeeding uh, if you do it manually. So um, I would never ever um, do it uh, in, 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 in this way. That was a nice colleague, cake. Yes. Um, so, uh, but 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 that's that's so. But this PLC that I just made here, that's a, a very simple one to make. Uh, so um, yeah, so um, that could be done manually, but um, I, I I wouldn't do it. Instead, I would create a new one, five thousand and six, I think. And then again back to this PLC because you can see what this uh, does here. If I say again, I have eight inputs here. Then maybe I had four inputs, digital. I could go in here and then I had four other inputs. They could be analog. Four plus four equal eight. If that's what I want to do, I can click here. And I guess that you recognize this window. My first part, A, for input digital, if they look like what they did before, x0, and then it'll be i0, and fill the grid. I can select the reference symbol. You remember from just before, it looks like this. Then that will be part number one. Part number two, they might have two terminals. This one would be x4, and the address would be i, Four, and then uh, that one doesn't look okay. And then what? This one would be four, and I think the function here would be a plus, for instance. If I go up here, you can see that this is the suggest suggestions from uh, the program here. I'll click OK, reference symbol, add. I'll take uh, this one with four. Looks like this. Nothing to select here. So I'll just go next, next, next. And it was 5006, so I'll go in the database, 5006, this will be this one. And you can see that now I have four inputs on this tab here, on this uh, reference symbol, and I have four other symbols, uh, four other addresses here. They look very much the same, the same component. And if I go in here and take this one, you can see I have a reference between all of them. Maybe it wasn't the best symbol that I selected, but never mind. This is how I make this component. And I guess that that was quite easy for everybody to do so. But I promise you that if you did this manually, then you could see that this up here now becomes a little bit complicated. But if I take this one, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, I guess that you, you could, you could do that, so that would probably be, be, be okay. But let's just take one new one because uh, I can make it even more complicated. <laughs> so um, if I have uh, PLCs, then again, I'll just have, there will all be, 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 be eight inputs or eight, eight addresses here. You can see that one here was that I had four plus four. I could also have eight uh, of inputs, for instance, or depending on how I put, for instance, a small dip switch, could be eight input digital analog or outputs, eight or eight equals eight. You remember or, or, or what the small windows here, the small, uh, 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 what they call the rectangles here, the boxes, the small boxes, one box is one option, option one, option two. That's what you can do. If you do that, you have two sets of things and, and things will simply disappear when you take one. 
but a lot of component PLC components today would be, for instance, that the, depending on uh, um, a setting of the component, uh, all eight addresses could be selectable. They could be input or output. Um, so what I have uh, could be either for channel one input output, channel two input output, channel three input output. If that's a type of component you have, um, then um, that's a, that could be a selection here. So if I go in here, you can recognize the window again. If the one I, I, I have here is um, the, com the, the terminal is called one, it could be input one because that's, they are inputs here, full grid. Or, and I could go in and select this one. Now I can only have one uh, of, of those um, uh, reference symbols here because uh, they will also differ per, per selection. But outputs, again, it will be the same terminal that I connect to, uh, but the address will now be 01, uh, full grid. Uh, and the reference symbol will look like this. Looks exactly the same, but it's two different symbols. And if I made this one here, you can see that when it comes in here, I'll go to the database and select that one. Then you can see oh, here that reference symbol, input, output, you can see per set I have uh, input, that was a reference symbol. Ah. I, I didn't want to delete it. This is the output. So if I want that one, uh, that's input, I can go in, select it here, or I could take it from here. It depends on where I want to take it from. So this one, input, input, and uh, I could take output, 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 um, uh, go in and, and, and take it from here. When I have those, uh, we call them alternatives, then I don't really have the option to uh, select them all. So I need to take them one at a time, but again, you can see that this here comes in and I have the reference. They are working exactly the same way as the other ones. And in this way, I have full flexibility. It's easy to make in the database. It might, maybe you don't really like it this way, but uh, you have a full flexibility. It's easy to make by using the reference, um, no, by using the component wizard. Um, and uh, this is what uh, the component wizard can do. Do you have any questions? Um, because, um, yeah, <laughs> uh, not really, because I'm the only one who can speak. So I guess that no one can really hear things in uh, here. But I hope that when, when you've seen this, you can see that it's fairly easy to, to create your own components. And uh, remember that when you go through here, you can you can select, uh, when you select the different types of components and you'll simply be guided through the windows or the dialogues that are necessary to create that kind of, of, of component. So uh, that's uh, how you do it like here. Um, I think I promised you one small thing, actually. I can do that before times is up. Because if I go up here and say this database setting here, you can see that right now I have connected this uh, this database here. If I deselect so that I, I, I don't have any database connected, and then I'll just click OK here, then tools, database and that was simply because I saw that when we started up some of you were not Danish you were not English so maybe you want to go into properties here and say that those descriptions here they are in different languages and I use the descriptions for my parts list for my components list for all the different lists that are, are I'm um, what are they if, if they that they are, they are on here so if I want to have a description in Polish, for instance, I can go up here and insert a new data field. And if I say PL Descript, then I can make a new data field of 100 um, uh, characters. And that could be my Polish description. That could be very, very easily selected to have in my parts list. 
If I want to have other uh, data fields in here, simply do it the same way, add or insert, and um, that's how you can, you can do it. And if I have done this, and then I do it like this, I'll close this database uh, window again, I'll go back to here and then I'll go in the database and I'll select it that you'll just see select the data file file and then up to my setup here then in my component wizard I have all the different extra fields here I want to add this new description to my component wizard now it's in here I'll click OK Okay, once again, I'll open it one last time before we finish because it's 10 o'clock. Um, so I'll make a new one here. Next, 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 next. And then you can see here, I have the descriptions that I just added. I think that would be a very hectic finish for that, but I think I, I, I more or less promised you that when we started up. But thanks for now. That was a webinar about the component wizard. If you have any questions, Please feel free to uh, contact us at webinar at pcschematic.com. They'll be in daughters and my uh, mailbox, so uh, either one of us will answer. And then I would send you a link to the recorded version of the webinar. So um, thanks for staying in, and I hope to see you another time. Bye-bye.